Before I begin, I made a playlist showing off what I plan to review when I'm done with this MLP marathon. You can check it out on my channel. Now that the public service announcement is over, let's review the cutie pox. <sighs> This episode starts with the Cutie Mark Crusaders trying to get their cutie marks. Again. <sighs> this time it's bowling! Wait, how do ponies bowl if you need fingers to roll the ball? Oh, that's how. They stick the whole damn thing in their mouth. Bowling doesn't work out. Pardon me if I'm not at all surprised. Sorry if I sound a little bored, but I think I've already seen this episode. Three times! Look, even Apple Bloom is tired of this formula. Sweetie Belle and Scootaloo try to cheer her up through various shenanigans. Eventually, Apple Bloom starts walking into the Everfree Forest because I have no idea. I don't know why Scootaloo and Sweetie Belle don't try to stop her either. Yeah, they call her, but that's about it. So, Apple Bloom is walking through the deadly forest alone when she trips on a tree root and chips a tooth. Luckily, she runs into Zakora. While Sakura is fixing up a potion to fix Apple Bloom's tooth, we hear the lesson that the CMC have been told time and time again. Soon, Apple Bloom's tooth is fixed, and then she asks Sakura if there's a potion that could give her a cutie mark. Sakura tells her no, and then she tells Apple Bloom about a flower that grants a heart's desire. And then Sakura leaves. What happens next is about as predictable as everything else in this episode. Sometime later, Apple Bloom seems to have her cutie mark, and she begins to proudly show it off to her classmates. Apparently, her talent is hula hooping. Hey, Apple Bloom, I'm sure you'll make a killing doing that for the rest of your life. But to her credit, she's really good at it. Good enough to get Shirley to cancel class and watch the show. If that's not out of character for Shirley, then she's one of the worst teachers ever. So Apple Bloom does a bunch of tricks in a scene that goes on for way too long. She's in the air when suddenly another cutie mark appears. Since there's never been a pony with two cutie marks before, every pony thinks she's a fraud. To prove she's not, she has to do her other talent. And she's actually good at it, making every pony think that she's some kind of prodigy. Yes, people, remember that every pony is special, but some ponies are more special than others. Then we get another sequence of Apple Bloom showing off her talent. It also goes on for way too long. There are gags, some work, most don't. Either way, it's just filler. Later that night, her family is fawning over her and telling her how proud they are. But Apple Bloom is tired and eager to get to bed. In the middle of the night, Applejack hears tapping coming from Apple Bloom's room. It turns out now Apple Bloom has a third cutie mark, and she can't seem to stop tapping. Applejack takes her to Twilight, who diagnoses her with cutie pox. Of course, it takes her like a minute and a half to actually do it. Cutie pox causes random cutie marks to appear all over the pony's body, forcing them to do all the tasks that came with them. And there's no known cure. Suddenly, Apple Bloom gets another cutie mark. Wait, was that... was that what I think it was? Oh my god, it was an actual laugh! This episode had a good joke! Too bad it's 15 and a half minutes in. Twilight and Applejack get the idea to go find Sakura, but Apple Bloom has another random cutie mark appear. And more appear. By the way, this is about another minute of filler. It ends with Spike telling some ponies that Apple Bloom has the cutie box, getting the whole town into panic, and they all go into hiding. Suddenly, Sakura appears. What, you're not going to have Twilight and Applejack wander through the forest for a minute or two? Twilight tells Sakura that Apple Bloom has the cutie box, and Applejack asks her if her zebra sense was tingling. How... How the hell does Applejack have the funniest lines in the episode? I mean, how does that happen? Zakora says that she's missing some of the ingredients she needed for her potions, and they mysteriously went missing after Apple Bloom's visit. Since Zakora is actually able to connect two and two, she's able to figure out who did it. Unfortunately, Apple Bloom doesn't want to admit to anything. Zakora presents them with the seeds of truth, which can grow a flower that cures the cutie pox. The only way to get the flower to grow is to tell the truth. So, you're letting this go on as punishment until Apple Bloom tells the truth, huh? Just when I thought this episode couldn't get any more predictable. Wait, it, is that Pinky shaking? Does she have a deep, dark secret? Can she save this episode? Yesterday I told Mrs. Cake that I ate two corn cakes, but I really ate three! I guess that was a little funny. That's, that's a little better. <laughs> okay, that was a good joke. And that brings our total to three. Finally, Apple Bloom tells the truth and the seeds grow. Apple Bloom eats the flower and all of the cutie marks disappear. Then we get the moral. Dear Princess Listia, waiting for what your heart desires can be really hard. So you may try to take a shortcut. 
But this dishonesty never works because you didn't earn what your heart desires. The only cure is being honest with yourself and others. And that's something every heart desires. And then this happens. All good things come to those who wait. Well, I've waited long enough. Actually, trying new things is a good idea. It can help you discover who you truly are. I guess unless you're these three. Oh god, was this episode tedious. No, I wouldn't exactly call it bad. A much better word is weak. Why? Well, for one, it's predictable. Hands up, did anyone think that Apple Bloom would have her cutie mark by the end of this? No, I didn't think so. A character can be doing the same thing over and over again as a sort of continuing running gag, but it can never sustain multiple episodes. At least, not on its own. There's also a ton of filler in this episode. Every scene is at least three times longer than it needs to be. Remember back when a cartoon episode had three shorts? Yeah, if you stripped away all of the filler in this episode, it wouldn't last for one of those. I mean, this might have worked as a subplot, but not as the main action. And it is ungodly boring. Like I said, only three jokes hit bullseye throughout the whole thing, and two of them came from a background pony. Wait, Applejack's not a background pony? Could've fooled me. But in this episode's defense, it doesn't do anything outwardly bad. There are no plot holes, everyone's still in character, it doesn't gross me out. So, like I said, I wouldn't call it bad. Just remember what they say about Chains and Weakest Links. I'm gonna give this episode my not-quite-bad-but-still-pathetic two-star rating. If it didn't have so much filler, then it might have gotten a three-star rating. But remember, entertainment is supposed to be entertaining. Yes, I got the Big Lebowski reference. It doesn't help the episode. 